It's 23, and we are at 35 degrees. It is Monday, and that means Dr. Nathaniel Cogley joins us from Tarleton State University, head of Department of Government Affairs. And uh, Doc, we certainly appreciate your time this morning. It was a busy, busy weekend in the news cycle, especially in Washington, as the uh, president's defense team uh, started to mount their defense on Saturday afternoon. So we kind of got a, about a two-hour sneak preview of uh, what we are expected to see today and tomorrow. Uh, just want to kind of get your first reactions to what the defense team uh, had to say. Uh, good morning, Mark. I thought the um, contrast between these two teams has always been remarkable. Um, the House managers are themselves politicians, and that was clear in their presentations. They were playing to the home district. Um, Jerry Nadler had the nerve to tell the senators they were complicit in the cover-up. You know, if they dare, don't allow witnesses. That's not designed to win over Senate votes. That's designed to the home district. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he called the Impoundment Control Act of 1974 the Anti-Impoundment Act of 1974. Senators don't believe that stuff, but it might play well to the home district. And the contrast between the House managers and the team, the president's team that presented on Saturday was, I thought, significant. It was a very professional presentation. It was factually based. And they went through a number of things. One, they wanted to show that the House managers themselves left out a lot of information that was developed in the House investigations. So they focused on evidence, not new evidence, but evidence that was already compiled in the House investigation. Um, that they chose not to show them. Um, and then also uh, the lead lawyer, Pat Cipollone, said, um, talked about the gravity of the question that's in front of them, um, not only overturning the last election, but trying to remove President Trump from the ballot in the future election. Um, they went through all these things. Michael Perpura uh, took on the abuse of power, the first article of impeachment, and uh, Patrick Philbin took on the obstruction and due process questions. Um, and overall, it was a very, not only a, I, I felt a strong case, but a concise case. They made their case in two hours and let the senators go about their day. As far as the information that has come out over the weekend with the, uh, the John Bolton situation, um, how do you see that kind of playing into things right now? I mean, obviously, uh, it's a little bit, it's a day late and a dollar short for the House to go back and investigate this now. But does it, uh, does it justify maybe a little bit more the House manager's request to call more witnesses? Well, we see the reports. I don't know um, which which uh, report you've seen. I've seen them through, you know, MSNBC. So I'm not quite sure. You know, this is being leaked out. This is right. not the official channel. So it might be le- being leaked out through a partisan case. Um, there's always been two questions here. Um, one is, did the president do what's being alleged? And the second question is, what they're even alleging, even a crime? Mm-hmm. You know, so so Bolton is a question of. Uh, did he allege, you know, any connection between the aid and investigations? Um, not a question about is that even a crime at all. Um, so, but we 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 are seeing pressure from the House managers to call Bolton to bring him up there. He is a former employee. There could he could be disgruntled in some sense. So we're going to see that pressure build, and they've already kind of set the um, foundation for when they lose this case to say it wasn't fair because Bolton wasn't uh, testifying. Right. So do you, uh, you know, real quickly, we've got about 30 seconds left. Do you see, um, do you see them calling witnesses come Friday? Well, I do, but I don't see it to be the witnesses that are the bombshell witnesses that people are talking about. I see them taking, say, what are the Democrats' best points and bring on a witness or two to to basically counter those points Mm -hmm. and then you'll get uh, the votes uh, to exonerate the president Uh, and the focus on burden sharing was interesting because it's actually a clause that allows a president to temporarily defer in the fiscal years to affect savings which uh, trying to get Europeans to pay more does so it's interesting you know I I think the big part of this is that as much as people want to think that it's kind of a black and white situation it's really not there's an awful lot of shades of gray within this whole situation well, I think this, you know, we shouldn't be here at all. So I think objectively looking at this, it's a very weak case. At most, this is a civil case in U.S. District Court. So as I hear the president's team make their case, I think they're very strong. I think of some, some other things they could add to it, but it's a very strong case in defense of the president. There we go. Dr. Nathaniel Cogley joins me every single Monday morning at this same time. Doc, we always appreciate it, and we'll look forward to catching up with you same time, same channel next week. Thanks, Mark. Talk soon. You got to take care. 828 weather and traffic happening right now.